Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to discuss something that's really important for new image makers coming into the community or even for those who are experienced Pi image makers and really haven't ran into this problem. So uh, today's video is going to be about appropriate file size allocation when making a Pi image. Now, particularly, we're going to be discussing images, anything over, uh, I want to say, anything over 256 gigabytes. So uh, typically on the market, when people have Pi images, you'll usually have 32 gigabytes, 128, 256, 400, 500, maybe 512, because you have SSDs that are 500, then 512. And then, of course, after that, you have a huge jump from 512 gigabyte file sizes all the way up to one terabyte. The problem is that could happen to a lot of new image makers and even people who are experienced but not familiar with this situation is after you start dibble, dibbling and dabbling with images or file sizes for RetroPie that are over 256 gigabytes, you start to run into a file allocation problem if you don't make the image small enough and allocate appropriate room on the drive or on the image that will allow it to expand. So what do I mean by that? So as you guys know, uh, this year I made two different variations of Venom. I have a Venom one terabyte, which is actually about 600 and I think 670 gigabytes or so, or 650, something like that. And then I made, a, which you guys really don't have to worry about because after 600 and something gigabytes, you jump all the way up to one terabyte, properly pie shrunk. It'll fit because there's more than enough room for it to fit. However, when I made Venom, which is a 400 gigabyte image, I ran into some problems. And the reason being is uh, when you start getting into anything over 256 gigabytes, when you start uh, messing with 400 gigabytes, 500, you have to leave enough space for the file size to boot. And you want to free up that additional memory. And file allocation sizes really become a little difficult to manage if you aren't familiar with how much room you actually need. So for example, as you can see here, I have in front of me Venom 327. It's 327 gigabytes. Now this was made to fit on a 400 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. And from my understanding, I think some people probably have problems trying to boot onto a 400 gigabyte SD card. So they had to go up to 512. Reason being is uh, while I was working with this, uh, when you're working with this type of file size, and even as you guys get closer to 500 uh, gigabytes or one terabyte drive, you have to leave enough room on the image for it to expand, especially if it's pie shrunk. So while I was making Venom and I shrunk it down from a 600 gigabyte file all the way down to 327, actually, I'm sorry, not shrunk it. I had to delete a lot of larger games to make sure it could fit on a 400 gigabyte drive or a 500 or 512. How did I do that? Well, from experience, I had to play around with it. I had to guess. Uh, for the most part. So as you would see, originally I had took it all the way down to about four. No, actually I took this image down to about a good 350, 360. Well, guess what? That still wasn't enough room uh, for a 400 gigabyte SD card. So keep in mind, I don't have any 400 gigabyte SD cards. So typically the file size that would be on there would probably be about what, three, 75, maybe 365. So even with that available file size, uh, when you have a 400 gigabyte file, for example, or an SD card, uh, it has what available space about 375, 365. Now on top of that, you still need to have additional room between the image and the available allocated space on that drive, which is why Venom is actually made for 400 gigabyte, but it's Venom 327 gigabytes. Now on my right, I have another screenshot. And this is something you typically don't have to worry about too much uh, with 128 gigabyte file sizes, but uh, this is Damaso's Nostalgia Trip 128 gigabyte image. He does an exceptional job when managing uh, his image to fit 
more or less different types of SD cards or storage devices. Uh, typically, when I make a 128 gigabyte, it's going to be at least 119. I use Samsung Evo drives as well as SanDisk uh, Extremes. Those can hold up to 119 gigabytes. However, some of the cheaper cards can only hold 116 gigabytes in terms of file allocation sizes. Now, um, having this available space is really minimal. I think a lot of us are really familiar with what an SD card not only can really hold, but how much room we need to have is, as far as image makers to have the build or image expand properly on the memory card. So Damaso likes to make sure his image can actually fit on more SD cards, which is why 112 is a very good sweet spot for him. So uh, typically, like I've seen some cheaper cards, they can only hold 116. So that'll boot, even though the file size may say or the card may say 128. Not every SD card and not every SSD and not every USB drive is created equal. You have to, when you're creating an image, uh, especially when you're dealing with the bigger size images, you have to know the appropriate file size space. But again, 128, 256, you really don't have too much to worry about there. So um, just want to show you guys this really quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. So yeah, this is his 128 gigabyte uh, image. Typically, depending upon what card you would use, would be 119 image or 112 uh, for a sweet spot. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Now, another image maker here, you go ahead and pull it down some of this. Uh, this is another image from Demosel. This is actually a 256 gigabyte image, but as you can see, uh, it's actually a 231 gigabyte image. So uh, not too much to really play around with there. Again, you really don't have to worry about this in the 256 gigabyte range, but I definitely want to show you uh, how it could vary because if you don't manage this file allocation size, you'll have a, a SD card or an image from somebody. And this is why some of you probably get a black screen when you're trying to boot some of the newer images or even some of the older ones is because the person who made the image, uh, maybe you have a cheap SD card and it doesn't have enough available space, but it's not able to fully expand on this on the card or, or the device you wanna use so it can properly boot. Uh, here is one that I definitely want to pay, pay attention to, uh, Rick Dangerous. Now, we don't have a lot of images in the RetroPie community that are usually around 400 gigabytes. But however, this is one of them. So as you guys can see, uh, he did a great job making his image 317 gigabytes. Uh, allocated space for this image is about 341. So if this image is particularly uh, when we say, hey, this is a 400 gigabyte image, this is what you're actually looking at. And he actually used the same type of math uh, that I did when making my image for, to fit on a 400 gigabyte drive. He left more than enough space for it to fit on a 400 gigabyte drive. So again, if you're gonna have a 400 gigabyte drive, the actual file size is probably 350, uh, 365 or 375. And then on top of that, you wanna give the image enough room to expand so that it can properly fit on that device. So this was great file management here. Uh, and then of course, obviously, uh, Rick Dangerous, he always pie shrinks his stuff so that way it could fully expand on foot, fit on the image. Now, for those of you guys who are new to the RetroPie community and you're really not familiar with what I'm talking about, a lot of times you your image won't boot because it won't fully expand. Because if I have a, let's say, 400 gigabyte drive, and it's at uh, 365 or 375 and I filled it up, you got you can't just fill it up. You gotta leave extra room there for it to fully expand once uh, you have it there. So uh, yeah, so here's my Venom. It's actually 335 gigabytes. It's actually, what, file size is probably 327. Again, so these are two 400 gigabyte uh, file sizes, images that you guys are looking at. And you can see, how we appropriated our space to fit on a 400 gigabyte device. Because you wanna make sure that you have enough room between the actual count, which would be 365 or 375 for it to fully expand. Uh, I think I have one of these last that I definitely wanna take a look at. We have the Wolf of Nose Retromania. Now I do believe this image is somewhere around 700 gigabytes. Uh, let's take a look at it. Um, I know the file size on the computer reads at about 871, but I think when I downloaded it, it was like 700 gigabytes, something like that. So as you can see, 
Uh, even though it's, this is technically a one terabyte classification, he had to leave, uh, I believe, what is the available space on a one terabyte? I think it's 913 is the available space on a one terabyte. So he had to leave over 40 gigabytes worth of allocated space or empty space just so it would expand. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is the actual size. I am sure. I think it's about 700. Sometimes you guys want to double check your computer files. Uh, sometimes I know a lot of the file sizes will say one thing when it's actually something else. But um, again, Wolf of Nose had to do the math on it as far as allocation size on one terabyte. You couldn't just fill it up. You got to delete a lot of games or keep in mind that, you know, you need room for expansion. And so um, this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video, because what will happen is your image won't boot. Or in some particular cases, let's say your image fully expands and that person doesn't have any additional room on that drive. What will happen is uh, it won't save the bezels for those of you who have had issues in the past where you saved your bezel settings and then you went back into another game and then it erased or it didn't properly save. Or for those of you who have controller configs, you went to save your controller settings, but it didn't save anything. You had to do it every time over and over again. And so situations like this, uh, when the image is fully taken up and there's no room for additional config files to be saved, table of contents for, the S, uh, for your SD or SSD, that's what will typically happen. Even if you could get the image to fully boot or fully expand onto that drive and you didn't leave a large enough allocation uh, of space on that particular drive, those are some of the types of issues you will run into when making a RetroPie image is that you won't be able to save control f controller files. Uh, game configs typically won't save. Uh, if you uh, deleted bezels, you turn them off and say, hey, man, I turned my bezels off. What's going on now? You know, I have to every time I turn my pie off or go back into a game, I have to mess around with these settings. This is what typically happens. And then what happens is you have to, if your image is able to boot, uh, you typically have to go into the, the ROM files and delete some of the larger size ROMs. I've done that in one of my previous tutorials where um, I know it was one of Wolfenos's, uh, I think it was his last 256 gigabyte image that was for the Pi 3B Plus. I did a tutorial on that where uh, some of the controllers wouldn't save uh, the settings. You couldn't delete bezels that wouldn't save. And so you would have to go into that particular image, uh, delete a lot of the larger games. I think it was like a total of 15 to 20 gigabytes that you really needed to clear out just so you could save your controller profiles and stuff like that. And so I'm not sure exactly what happened with that particular build, but for those of you who are coming in new to the community or wondering why you have those particular issues, or if you are adventuring into thinking about making a particular image, especially making anything over 256, these are some of the problems and some of the concerns that you will run into and some of the things that you need to plan for when making a RetroPie image because it will cause a lot of problems. It will cause a lot of hassle. Um, for example, I know I've seen a lot of images uploaded to arcade punks. They could be labeled as, uh, let's say, a 300 gigabyte image, something like that, but really because they didn't delete a lot of files and you go out and buy a 400 gigabyte SD card thinking it's going to fit and you find out like, crap, it won't fit. So you have to jump up to 500 gigabytes or 512 so that would fit. So those are just some of the things to be aware about. Like even myself, if I had released Venom at, let's say, 360, three, let's say if it was at 360, for example, it still wouldn't boot or fully expand on a 400 gigabyte drive. And so uh, that would have. I would say, quote unquote, maybe misled some people because you would have went to the store and say, oh, I want to get Kill's latest image, go out and get it or you order it on Amazon because 400 gigabyte drives or SD cards you don't really see in the store. So you order from Amazon, it takes you a few days, you boot it up and you find out it doesn't expand and you're like, oh, crap. Now I have to use a 500 gigabyte SD card or 500 gigabyte SSD. So again, those are the kind of problems these will typically cause. Now, in a particular situation, 
for example, if you do have a like a one terabyte and the image is three or four hundred gigabytes, five hundred, six hundred gigabytes, you really won't worry because that one terabyte drive is so big, anything can load on it. I mean, unless it's a one terabyte uh, variant and the file allocation space is about eight ninety nine, maybe nine thirteen. Chances are you may have some issues because they didn't uh, allocate for that additional space. So. Again, guys, this is Keo Daikin. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys took this information to heart. Um, I haven't really seen too many videos on this particular issue. I do know there aren't a lot of RetroPie images out there over 300 or 400 gigabyte variant. Uh, some of the other people in the community that make images probably ran into this and they had to burn the image, found out it didn't you know, boot, go back in, delete some stuff go back in, try to re, you know, boot it up again, find out it didn't fully expand, go back in the image, redelete some stuff. So that's how some of us actually found out about this was constantly writing and rewriting and editing the same image. So this will cut down a lot of problems for you guys in the long run. I really hope you guys understood the gist of what I'm saying. I want to be clear with a lot of this because uh, I have talked to some experienced image makers who have not made anything over a 256 gigabyte image or variant. And they weren't aware of this type of file allocation size uh, that needs to be allotted when you start crossing over that 300 gigabyte threshold. You need to leave more additional space on that SD or SSD card once you start messing around with 300 gigabytes, 500 gigabyte, one terabyte variants. All right, uh, you guys all have a good night. And I will catch you guys later. Like and subscribe. This is Kill Daiken. Peace.